for a change. I'm having a day at home, not going anywhere today. I briefly thought about having a wander around the local town for a few bits where I live, but I thought, to be honest, I could probably film several things just by remaining here at the, in the garden. And there are a few bits that I've found. Now, the first of those bits that I've found is sort of demolishing this wild majorum that I have. It's planted in a pot, produces loads of nectar bearing flowers, which the bees, the butterflies, and the hoverflies absolutely adore. There's also a moth that takes a particularly strong fancy and liking for its leaves. And the larva of it is on here, but there are still the odd adults around, although I've not seen one this morning. And it's the mint moth. This is the larva of it. But I've noticed there's a lot of larva on here, more than what I thought. It wasn't until I started looking that there are numerous caterpillars of this beautiful little moth. And here is my prize majorum plant. This one has already flowered. The flowers are formed on the end of about two foot long growth. And once they finish flowering, then I tend to cut it down. And it's now providing all this lush growth, beautiful soft growth. But it's been somewhat trounced by the larva of mint moth. I don't mind too much because mint moth is a beautiful little thing anyway now. Insert some photos as we go along in the absence of an adult moth turning up. But you can see the effects of mint moth on these sort of eaten leaves here. There's lots of frass on different parts, especially down here. But the larva itself lives in a tubular retreat and it'll probably make several as it goes through its life there's one just here look see how that leaf has been curled around to form a tube sometimes they will stick and weave two or three leaves together and the caterpillar lives within that and i'll say here is a caterpillar I've undone its tubular retreat, which was sort of wrapped around it like that. And normally these drop out very quick, almost tortrix like if you get caterpillars of light brown apple moth, which there'll be lots of in the garden here. Tortrix caterpillars descend and make a run for it, often backwards out of the confines of their tubular retreat or folded leaf retreat upon approach. This caterpillar is nearly full grown, it's probably about 12, 13 mil in length. But the mint moth really is an absolute stunner. Purple, beautiful bright purple, with glorious gold yellowish markings on. Very variable. There is a similar species, and that's not usually found in gardens. But mint moth, Pyrostra orata, has probably increased in the last 10 years or so. And I get numbers here. I'm going to get a lot more judging by the number of larvae that are on this. But Majorum is a great plant. So it's fabulous as a nectar source, but this one's fair being eaten by the larva of the mint moth. Now, if you can see me from behind this beautiful tall flower spike of what's known as Russian sage, 
Alternatively, there's a proper term for it, the proper scientific name is Perovskia, apparently. Something I've just learned, because I tend to buy things and then throw the labels away. I don't like labels. But this is a beautiful shrub. It flowers late on, so it provides a succession of flowers throughout the late summer and into the autumn. It's eagerly visited by bees as well, so a very useful plant to have. I've noticed the last couple of days it also attracts something else. The beetle that I've featured recently on this channel, and it's a rosemary beetle. There's about seven on here now. And not in the best of light, but you'll get the picture. This is the beautiful Chrysalina americana, the rosemary beetle. And I say, I didn't realise until I saw two on here the other day that this beetle would be found on this Perovskia. But I also didn't realise how centred the leaves were and that it was actually a herb. It's a very strong smell. It's a brilliant shrub. It's used quite a lot now in modern sort of shrubberies and planting schemes around buildings and it produces these lovely tall flower spikes. I cut this one down each year, cut it down to very low down and it produces tough growth. In fact I even did, I did pull it up once but it's come back again. But I do like it, I must admit. The flowers say are loved by bees. And the foliage in the flowers were loved by this beautiful beetle. So at the moment, I've just had a quick count, and there's about seven on here, including a couple of mating pairs. I don't mind small numbers of rosemary beetle. It's never going to attract large numbers. But it's a beautiful thing to have in the garden. And of course now, as you drive around or nosy blatantly in the neighbour's gardens you'll see copious planting of this plant and it is a corker there is probably just the merest hint of a scent but it's a really good source of nectar it will attract species like hummingbird hawk moth into the garden but it never seems to hold them for too long in my experience I don't think there's a great deal of nectar in these beautiful flowers but a range of butterflies will feed on these during the day though. This of course is Verbena bodneriensis and there's some terrific variants and other plants similar to this now. There's some smaller varieties of Verbena and all the time there's new varieties and species coming on the market. It's a great plant to have in your garden to attract insects. It's a must. I would rather have this than Budlia, to be honest. Budlia is alright, but you need a big garden for Budlia. And the trouble, or the downside with Budlia, is that you tend to get one big flower in and then it's done. You can get a smaller flower in once the side shoots mature and the flowers open, but I prefer this because it's a great plant for growing up amongst others and that's what I use it for here. I do let it self-set and I do thin it out a little bit but it's a great plant and you may have noticed in other scenes from this video this beauty growing. Dennis and I always used to grow the Kosciana, the ordinary one been difficult to get hold of from local plant nurseries and so a couple of years ago I got some seeds, I bought a packet of seeds for this, this is Nicotiana sylvestris and it grew really well from seed and it self sets as well. This is another great late flowering plant and there's only one species that I grow it for because to be honest there's only one species that can feed off this and reach the nectar down these long tubular shaped flowers. That species is the convolvulus hawk moth. Despite numerous plants of Nicotiana sylvestris in the garden, 
been no sign of convolvulus hawk moth, not as yet. But I live in hope that one day that huge, fabulous moth will grace the flowers of Nicotiana sylvestris growing in the garden. But I like it not only for the flowers, but also for the large leaves. It does produce really large leaves which add quite a bit of structure to the garden. This is the plant. The leaves, the main leaves of the plant. It's a brilliant plant. These large leaves are architecturally great for the garden. I do love them. And it continues to flower until the first frosts. And we've got another flower spike developing on here, but hiding tentatively behind this is my favourite. If you've watched this channel for any number of weeks or videos, you'll know of my love for valerian. Finally managed to get two plants of white valerian as well, so they'll add a bit of a nice splash of white to the garden in the early spring. But through deadheading, continually removing any dead heads, once they've finished flowering, just take the heads down to the next pair of buds or decent pair of buds that are showing some growth and you'll get a succession of valerian flowers right through and well into the autumn. It's not unusual to get valerian flowering right into November and of course I grow it purely for one moth and that's the hummingbird hawk moth. It does attract a large numbers of other moths and silver Y is a common migrant that loves to feed on valerian. Valerian, even if you have just one plant of it, is a must for your garden if you want to attract insects into it. But beware, again, it is a prolific seeder. So, although you might only start off with one plant, eventually you'll get lots of plants, so you need to keep on top of your weeding. I allow some to grow and I do that because sometimes valerian after so many years it tends to go horrible and useless it needs to come out but for a garden flowering plant to attract insects this is number one Now this small white is not only feeding on the Verbena bodneriensis but below it the flowers that I've got planted down there that's devil's bit scabious that's a plant I've always had in the garden for a number of years I've always kept some devil's bit scabious in the garden it's down to about one plant though at the moment so I've got to let some of the developing plants grow and replace this one this one doesn't look the healthiest when you look at some of the lower leaves but this is a fabulous source of nectar hoverflies adore this so do honeybees there's a honeybee now just on that flower at the bottom of your screen there it's only downside is that it's a prolific cedar the only way you can avoid that is to keep removing the flower heads once the flowers are finished and the seeds are forming. That way, as a common card of comes down to nectar somewhere, you, you will keep devil's bit scabies under some degree of control. But each spring, you will get carpets of young seedlings but it's a great source of nectar and it's another one of those plants that's good for coming through taller plants it'll always find a way to flower but say the bees and the hoverflies absolutely adore it Now 
Now this is a shrub. You might well consider having in your garden. I've only got a small garden, just of a small terrace house, but there's plenty of room for this. And it does flower, although you'll probably never realise it's flowering until you wonder why the honeybees and bumblebees are feverishly walking around it. It produces just very small green bell-like flowers just sort of tucked away. In fact, hidden away sometimes, quite well into the foliage. I clip this usually once a year. But the bees just love it. It's a great plant also for overwintering invertebrates. It's because I clip it once a year, it's now formed quite a dense thatch of foliage. It is evergreen as well. Consequently, invertebrates can get in there and settle down and they'll survive the winter or the worst of the winter weathers and temperatures quite happily. It's a great shrub to have. It does come, this is actually the golden form of Linnaea pileata. It also comes in a variegated form, an ordinary dark green form, all of them flower. But it's a great thing. The Bumblebees love it. You certainly don't need a large area of garden to garden for wildlife and for invertebrates. Even a small window box will produce results if you plant it with the right kind of plants. Obviously, you can't usually use plants that I've showed you today. These are all sort of garden sized plants. But search around and you can get plenty of nectarbearing plants for something like a planter like a window box or just a pot but one thing that Dillis and I decided we wanted we wanted to bring the garden down the yard right take it right up to the back door and a series of pots planted with a range of plants many of which are nectar bearing plants and useful for invertebrates have done the trick even had hummingbird hook moth right at the side of the back door it means that I can have a cup of tea out on the yard it's nice and sheltered, so it's always warm. Sit and watch the invertebrates. The invertebrates come to me. And these are worth growing. These woody, shrubby type salvias are great. Bumblebees love them. Brilliant how bumblebees do them, because, the, because of the shape of the flowers, bumblebees can't nectar in the way. So what they do is they go in through the side. Just at the back here, we've got a bumblebee that's just turned up. This is a common card a bit at the top of the screen there. This is Bombus pascuorum. And this, I've just noticed, can nectar at these salvia flowers in the traditional manner that you would expect. All the bumblebees, though, can't, and they go in through the side of the flower. These flowers don't appear to present any kind of problem to Bombus pascuorum which is the only bee that I'm getting in the garden at the moment. Anyway, this is Salvia Hot Lips, very well planted in many gardens now. These woody salvias are brilliant and they're great for nectar sources. Well worth growing in some fabulous colours now. And here's a welcome lady, only a few feet from the back door. This of course is the garden cross spider or garden spider Aranius diadematus. Beans take an awful lot of insects and stop them coming into the house. When you're gardening for wildlife, you have to garden for everything. You can't just say, well, I want to attract the butterflies because they're pretty. You need to attract everything into your garden. We're running out of space, and certainly in terms of gardens, such a high percentage of gardens have been lost under tarmac decking. Stones and the most abhorrent of all, and that's the plastic grass. Plastic grass should be banned. It's dreadful stuff. We should not be selling that. So, when you're attracting invertebrates into your garden or want to attract invertebrates, make room for spiders and the less well liked invertebrates don't just go to attract butterflies and ladybirds and things you want all sorts in your garden and you'll get all sorts in your garden 
and then they're there to be enjoyed. Like them or not, spiders, you have to admire spiders. The construction of their webs is just fabulous. Enjoy your gardening and enjoy gardening for invertebrates. It'll bring you hours of pleasure. Just doing a bit of deadheading while I'm here. The colour on this petunia. It's fantastic. Do you know, a month or so ago, I nearly took this out, this petunia, because it was just getting eaten to death by cabbage moth caterpillars. Yes, it's not a cabbage, so I don't know why they were eating it, but they tend to like anything, cabbage moths. But it's come back. It's now flowering better than it's flowered all, all year. But it makes a great display. But keep deadheading. Any plants, they always look better for being deadheaded anyway, but when you deadhead, you're encouraging that plant to produce further flowers. Here's another one that you can do. This is verbena, this is the bedding one. Come in a variety of colours, and some I like, some I'm not keen on because they're a bit gaudy, but the bees and the insects love these. Ideal for that window box or single pot plant that you want. On your window ledge on your windowsill but you say you don't need a large garden you don't need a large space to attract invertebrates it's like the old Kevin Costner field of dreams build it and they will come in this case it's invertebrates you provide the flowers and the invertebrates will turn up no matter where you live. But in whatever manner you decide to garden, whether you want to garden just for the flowers or purposefully to grow flowers to attract invertebrates, you'll never be disappointed. There will always be plenty for you to have a look at with ladybirds tucked away. You can go and find with the kids that broaden your interests look for a range of invertebrates just don't look for butterflies all the time you'll get more and more pleasure out of the flowers in your garden and the invertebrates that those flowers attract if you can't get out and about you can't visit nature reserves or anywhere in the countryside and you have limited access or mobility having a well planted garden at home is great and is probably the ideal substitute. I love my garden, I must admit. Always coming and walking up the garden to see what's turned up whether any hummingbird hawks have flown in and are nectaring on the valerian or the other nectarian plants that I've showed in this video. So however and whatever you do in your garden always enjoy it because the invertebrates all come to take the nectar but they're not taking this nectar this is solely for me